I say tournament, and people are like, why do you say tournament? I was like, isn't that the way it's spelled? And they're like, well, I say tournament. I was like, and I always would fight back and go, well, do you say Tour de France? I don't know. That obviously doesn't make sense. So now, the 100 times I say that in the month of July, you'll be thinking about it every good, single time. Good, good. I hope you mess up and call it the Tour de France one time. Oh, oui, oui. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing today? Parlez-vous, Francois? Well done. You're going tomorrow? I'm going tomorrow. Fran France oh. tomorrow. You're looking very French right now. Very like, French? Yeah, I don't know. Just Black looking shirt. cool. Just trying to match Black you. shirt, nice yeah. haircut. How do you get the haircut way short? Because I'm gone for like five weeks. Yeah, so you got to so. plan. You got to plan that out, right? The yeah. right way. It looks good, man. When You're looking good. Yeah. Very military. ish yep. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. You can pull it off. You coming? You want to come over? I really do want to come over. It's like truly like top of my bucket list. But no, I'm not coming this time. Maybe next year I'll do it with you. At the very least, tune in. So right. If I say tour instead of tour. Oh, I'll be all over you. <laughs> all over. Hit me you. in some way. I will. All don't right? I? You turd. <laughs> you said tur. What are you doing? I will not include the D. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. What up? up everybody Chris Sims on button here we got the final quarterback rankings number two number one who will they be I don't know you'll find out soon but um yeah we're gonna get into that all that's left is Mahomes and Rodgers Rodgers and Mahomes two of my favorite quarterbacks in football all of that again you know I, a lot of people talking about you know I have to go on radio stations here and there you know what what, what are you doing? How are you ranking this quarterback? Has it been an active well, week of, it's, of defense? It's for the last two weeks, yes. You know, and, and, of course, it all started with really the Tom Brady thing at nine. Yes, and I get that. And, you know, again, to further the explanation of how you do these things. And, and, again, I'm not all about stats and wins and losses. You know, the reason guys like Mahomes and Rodgers are at the top of my list is because – in two very big categories, they are very good, which is taking, taking what's there to be had, okay, at the quarterback position. What is there to be had? Are you take, making the most of those situations? I think both of, both, both of these guys, you know, make the most of those situations consistently Sunday after Sunday. Now, some of those games you see Aaron Rodgers and you go, well, it doesn't look that good statistically. I'm just telling you, you got to trust me, a guy that's been around it for a while, in those games – He's still taking all this there to be had. There just ain't nothing there to be had sometimes. And they're so overmatched. And when you, you know, when I watch film of Aaron Rodgers and I'm watching a game in week seven, right? And I go, hey, it's the second quarter. And here's the fifth time I've seen this same play already. Okay. That doesn't go on with the other great offenses. And not only is it the fifth time I've seen the play in the first half of the game, but yet I saw the same play seven times the week before too. So, so to think defenses aren't going to be all over those things. So what, taking advantage of what's there to be had, and then when nothing is there, what are you capable of doing? Those are very big to me. Yes, that's the quarterback position. All these guys at the top of the list are very smart. All-time great quarterbacks. I mean, we can go through them, right? You've been around Elway or Marino. Sure, They're smart yeah. individuals. Right, extremely. Extremely smart. Now, are some a little smarter than others? Yes, certainly, definitely. I, I understand all of that. But, you know, another point I just want to make to argue with people a little bit because, again, I think the quarterback thing – throughout our country has just become quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. If we win, it's because of the quarterback. If we lose, it's because of the quarterback. And I'm trying to hopefully squash that narrative a little bit to get back into this is the greatest team sport on the planet, and there's so many different variables and so many things not only that go on with 22 different people on the football field, but schemes, matchups, the talent around you, the coaching staffs around you. All of that goes into this, and not everybody has an equal playing field there. So I'm trying to make it an equal playing field within these rankings. Like I would, I would ask you this. Mm -hmm. Was John Elway not the best quarterback in 1983? Now, like to me, in 1983, his rookie come, season. You know, this is his last year in college football when I believe they went three and seven at right. Stanford. Right. He's the best quarterback in college football. Now, he might have not had the best year mm -hmm. to say, oh, he had the best year statistics and their team went 10 and one. But regardless, he was the best quarterback. Right. As in, he's the first pick of the draft. Teams didn't go, well, oh, I don't know. I don't know about him. I mean, oh. There was, there was zero doubt. That's what I mean. It was next level talent. Right. Now, Patrick Mahomes was on a 5-7 and seven team at Texas Tech his last year in college football. He wasn't the slam dunk. No, he was not. Was, he, you know, he was not. You're right. He was not the slam dunk pick. And, and, but still, certainly one of the best college quarterbacks in the nation that year, and I would argue the best, right? Mm -hmm. But again, he didn't have the best year, but it wasn't because of him. It was because 
weapons around him, system, shitty O-line, all of those things. And this is what I'm hoping to kind of continue and further along this conversation all the time. And I just think too many times with these rankings, we always just take it as a team and everything like that. And there's just more to it in the game than that. So I hope I explained myself a little there too again. I think it's very important that, right. that you pointed out that your second point that's very important for all these quarterbacks, whether yeah. it's a guy ranked first or 40th, that – after number one, can he do what he's supposed to do? Right. You get to number two when it's not working, when it's not there, can he create something on his own? Exactly. To me, that draws a real line of the sand. Right. Uh, all the people who are upset about, let's say, uh, Drew Brees right. at 10 or right. a Tom Brady at 9, they're terrific in their system. Yes, right. First ballot Hall of Famers. Right. But for someone who holds a lot of value, replaces a lot of value on what can you do when that breaks down. Right. You can understand why those people in your mind yes. aren't in the top three or four. Right. The people who are can do what they're supposed to, but yeah. they can also, Russell Wilson, Andrew Luck at right. three and four, right. they can make something happen when nothing else when is When nothing's helping. Exactly right. Like That's it's really all... important that you point that out because maybe Thank you. people don't have to agree with you, yeah, right. but they can understand, okay, through his eyes, right. what he holds is most important. Yes. I get it. Yes. And, and again... Another thing, I just want to clarify this because I'm a Tom Brady fan and a Drew Brees fan. I got nothing personal against them. And at points of their career, they were certainly the guys like Rodgers and Mahomes where I could right. go, oh, no, they can carry the team when nothing's there. Brady and Brees can make a throw where the guy's perfectly covered and they just put it on and then put him on it. Or, or they slide in the pocket and just hang in there, whatever it may be. But all I was trying to say is, yes, at this point of their career, the system is helping mm -hmm. them out every bit as much as they're helping the system. And I don't know if that's necessarily as true with the, the two guys we're going to talk about here in a minute. You mentioned the two guys. Anybody right. that's been following along, it's no surprise. It's going to be Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes in some form or fashion. Before we get into the actual ranking, how difficult was it for you to pick one over the other? It was extremely difficult. Um, it was the first year that I've said uh, in a long, long time, since really probably 2010, that I've gone, huh, I'm not sure Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in football. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I've had to question this. And really, do I really almost look at this not even as one and two. I almost go 1A and 1B, where I, I, I would almost classify both of them. But uh, I went back and forth. I definitely did. But, I, you know, when we get into it, I'll give you a few of the things that just gave me the final determination of why I put one above the other. A little bit of feedback and some anticipation sure. as we're getting ready here. Big Dano 34 says, Chris, and this is now in all caps, I can't handle the suspense for one and two between refreshing your timeline. I no longer have time to change my clothes and pet my dog. <laughs> not done here. I refuse to allow at Pro Football Talk to spoil the top two. We'll stare at your timeline until released. He didn't even watch you and Mike go. I like it. Yeah, this is a dedicated podcast listener. We need that right there. And that, that's cool. And I know we have a lot of people that are like that. So uh, hopefully we can, uh, you know, give all the answers here. And, and exp I can explain myself and, and cap this this uh, final 40 countdown off. Explain myself to thyself? Hey, to thyself, yeah. right. And scout, scout, we will self-scout thyself at the end of this as well. Got to get that in at some point. Yes, we do. All right. Number Is two. Time? Number two. All right, here we go. Number two, Chris Sims, top 40 quarterbacks in the NFL. Number two is Patrick Mahomes. My homie, my homie, my homie. Whenever he's on, I watch my homie, my homie, my homie. Yeah, I love Patrick Mahomes. I've been the on man. here eight or ten weeks, and I haven't heard You that. haven't heard that no. one? You didn't know that one? I just broke it out. Good. Now you know. I can't always break out you the greatest hits. No, I made it up like during the season last year. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Have you been singing it to Florio? Well, oh, your yeah. I, I, I let, I've let this out during the year last year. You know, I grew up in the My Buddy era, right? My Buddy and Kid Sister, right? So I don't know. I was at home one night, and I'm like that kind of guy who will just hum stupid jingles around every now and then. No way. And it just came out of nowhere where I was like, my buddy, and I went, my homie, and it just kind of clicked. So, there yeah, he that, is. that's my guy. But uh, Patrick Mahomes. Certainly worthy of being the number two quarterback. Hey, I mean, you certainly can make the case that he could be number one. Mm -hmm. I get that. I mean, it was one of the most unbelievable first year as a starter NFL quarterback that we've ever seen. It ranks up there, you know, with, with Dan Marino in 1984. That's how special of a year was. I mean, 5,000 yards, 50 touchdown passes. Are you kidding me? I mean, the sky's the limit. I do think that this is the guy that will overtake Rodgers eventually. Uh, maybe it's this year to where he's the number one quarterback and could be the number one quarterback and go on like a, a Rodgers like run where I go no he's the number one quarterback for like the next seven or eight years he certainly has that type of talent you know uh, 
awesome in the pocket. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever way you want to say it. He can stand in there and just make throws in the pocket. He can attack the line of scrimmage and then throw the ball awkwardly, you know, outside another hole and, and be awesome that way. And then, of course, we know his scrambling and the things we saw last year, whether it's, you know, wheeling around against the 49ers or the throw we saw against the, the, the Baltimore Ravens to on the fourth and nine and some of those special plays. I mean, that's Patrick Mahomes at his finest. And, and again, some of the plays he made made last year there's only a few play, players in the history of the league I think that can do what what Patrick Mahomes did in some of those instances now is he perfect no I do think he he left some plays on the field last year that's what's scary yeah. I mean and and I you know we've heard him admit that you know go back Watch early on in the first New England Patriots game. Yeah, Watch some other yeah. games where he's missed some wide open receivers. Now, it doesn't get glorified that all that much. Why? Well, because at the end of the day, their offense is so good, talent around them is so good that he got another, he got other cracks at it. I'll get another crack at Tyreek Hill 60 yards down the field and hit it the next time. Right. You know, and again, that's where I would argue like Aaron Rodgers didn't get that luxury all the time. And that's not a knock on Patrick Mahomes. Not, hey, Patrick Mahomes, the Kansas City Chiefs, this is not a knock on Mahomes or any other great quarterback because lots of great quarterbacks. But the talent he has around him is towards the top of football. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is Patrick Mahomes got, you know, drafted by a playoff caliber football team. And, you know, the year before, the number one rated quarterback in football before Patrick Mahomes took over was Alex Smith. Now, you can see what a great quarterback can do as compared to a middle-of-the-road quarterback. Right. He almost doubled the production in all areas, right? I mean, it went from 25 or 26 touchdowns to 50 touchdown passes. And it changed the whole dynamic of the game and what they do. But, you know, I think ultimately what made me make him two, right, uh, uh, behind Rodgers is really almost the experience thing and things like that where I just go, the talent, it's so close. They're both all-time special arms. They're both all-time scramblers, m manipulating the pocket, throwing the ball from awkward angles. They're both good decision makers. I mean, these are two guys that get qu qualified as, oh, they're gunslingers, but they take care of the football. I mean, Aaron Rodgers got the greatest touchdown interception ratio in the history of the sport. Just because you're willing to take a risk and, and you're good at it doesn't right. mean that most of the time you execute well. Th yes, and, exactly and right. make the right decision. Exactly right. And, 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 you know, I mean, for the most part, they really do. And, uh, you know, Mahomes... Again, there's so many special things he did last year. But, you know, I think you know, where I really got down into it and just went, okay, it's so close. All the top ten is nitpicky. It's little things of what separates one guy from the next. But really, I did. I came down to it and I just said, you know, I looked at it and said, I think if Aaron Rodgers is playing for the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC Championship game, I don't think he would have been as fooled by some of the coverages in those games. And, you know, maybe some of the other games of the, the Chargers the second time around or at Seattle Sea. Hawks or the Patriots the first time around and all of that too. So, you know, Mahomes is so special, but there is room to grow and that's what's scary. I mean, I would not be shocked if he's challenging 60 touchdown passes in a season here in the next few where, years. Where do you think he needs to grow the most to go from 50 touchdowns to 60? Yeah, I think, you know, um, really probably just seeing the field at its best, okay? Just, there, there's moments where you go, oh, gosh, if he was just a little more comfortable in the offense, and just had a little bit of a better field. Oh, he wouldn't have missed that guy shooting down the middle of the field. He would have waited for it and threw it, but instead he threw maybe a 10-yard curl to the right. But because the experience is not there yet, he's just playing it by the book. Like, hey, coach said, go to the curl first in this coverage and do that. Where, like, Rodgers and Brady, if they ran that same play, they're on, like, the next level of that play to go, hey, we want to throw the curl here every time, but just beware if we get this coverage, that middle post might pop open. Those are little things Mahomes could get better at. And then even maybe a hair lazy. And he made a comment about this his last week in OTAs or minicamp. A little lazy with mechanics because what happens? And this happens to Rodgers, too. They're so special. Right? Yeah. Right. I, I notice the exact same thing. They do that, things sometimes where you go, oh, just, just stand in there and get right? the right position, and you'll throw that ball perfectly. And like any quarterback, you pointed out, he, he's not perfect. He right. makes his mistakes. Right. And when he misses somebody that's open, we all go back and look and want to ask why. Yeah. And you can find so many things with his lower half. Exactly. His balance right. and, his, and right. his footwork that, that's off. But then he'll make six throws in a row that are incredible. And his and balance was off, off and they too. were off, so too. I know. It's almost I know. like you throw out the, the – the way you would critique a, uh, critique a normal quarterback right. and go back and say, oh, he didn't do that. Yeah. It's like it's not even worth doing with him because on so many of his good throws, 
the he's like that anyway. Great anyway. Yeah, no, I, I agreed, and, and really, this is both of these quarterbacks are the same way. Right. I mean, we can watch Rodgers and go, "Damn, I would never teach a kid to throw the ball with his feet in that position," but he throws a strike in there. Yeah. So you're right. I mean, it's they're, they're gift they're gifting the curse there a little bit with both of these guys, and you're right about Mahomes. And hey, at the end of the day, the game is about you know being able to make those plays under duress, unless you just have some unreal offensive line like. Hey, maybe Andrew Luck, you mm-hmm. know, he got a little of that luxury this year for the first time in his career, right, where he just, oh, gosh, nobody's around me. Look at this pocket. I could pat the ball and just kind of take my time. Um, but the game is about junk and people around you and being able to make those throws. My thing is when it's not like that and what you're saying, too, is – be true to the technique then, right? right? You won't miss any plays. You won't miss reads. You won't miss anything like that if the body's in proper position. Because, yeah, even if you're in improper positions, it can mess up with what you're seeing with your eyes or anything like that. Oh, you drop back at the, you know, the top of the, dra- the, the drop and you think, oh, gosh, I might, you know, I got to move and, oh, nobody's around me. And maybe you've looked down to peak at the rush or maybe – uh, okay, now you your your feet are all awkward, and you go, oh gosh, somebody's open, but your feet are awkward, and you can't find a way to get it out of your hand in time, and you have to settle for another completion. Just examples of like that that would say, gosh, if he could just clean that up, mm-hmm. it could be scary how good he could be, that offense could be, uh, and yes, he's just gosh, he is so fun to watch. That's why I fell in love with him, you know, right. coming out of Texas Tech. I just saw these aspects of him to go. This is another level of quarterback, and he's going to be able to do things we've never seen in the league before. You think about the fit, what a wonderful fit it is with, with Andy Reid calling the plays. And he, he was awesome with Donovan McNabb. Right. Really, really good with Alex Smith. I know yep. he liked Alex a lot. There he were a did, lot of people sure. that couldn't wait for Alex Smith to move on for some reason. Andy Reid wasn't one of those no, people. No, he was I not. I thought it was a real early compliment of how much he believed in Patrick Mahomes. Right. He was willing to say goodbye to a quarterback that he knew his offense yes. was like an A minus. Right with him, but he thought it could be A, A+. Plus. Right. And I was thinking about you with this ranking and some of the other guys that you've had a little lower down the list. Yeah. And we talked about your, your explanations of why quarterback X, I have him here instead of higher. Yeah. Because I like the system more than I like the quarterback. Right. With Andy Reid, yeah. I mean, he is probably making Patrick Holmes even a little bit better than sure. he is. Definitely. Because of definitely how good he is at calling plays. Yes. I wonder if that came into it at all with your thing. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it definitely always comes into my into my realm of thought when I br- break all this down. And I'm glad you brought this here because I wanted to go to this part of it too. Uh, so, you know, And that's not ripping Patrick Holmes uh, no, at all. Again, I think he's terrific anyway. Right, no. But, I mean, Andy Reid might be the best in the league at this part of the game. Well, he's really damn good. Now, I don't think I'll call him the best. Well, th- this, is the, this is to me where the difference of the Andy Reid offense is. It's, it's awesome, okay? I don't know if I'm going to quite put him in the class of – you know, McDaniels, Sean Payton, um, you know, maybe McVay and Shanahan. Mm-hmm. I think maybe those guys I'm looking at. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anybody else uh, that I want to make sure I hit on. While there. you're looking, I'm thinking yep. of the whole, like, the, the formation, the motion, the yes, scheme. Yes, I get you. at the right time. Right, and that's where I was. So this is, this is where – this is a good, good question by you because this, I do think this deserves to be talked about a little bit. Andy Reid, the system is really good. He's creative. He does different things. I do look at it as a different system than maybe a Breeze or a Brady uh, or some of the other ones I talked about, McVay, Shanahan, because this, this would be the difference to me. They attack schemes more. They basically crack the code to go, oh, you play this coverage? Well, I'm going to find a bunch of plays that are going to attack your rules and really make this coverage tough on you. Andy Reid doesn't necessarily do that. And not to say this is wrong, but I think Andy Reid's more approach is, you know, we got these good players. We're going to attack. We're going to be aggressive with downfield throwing, and I'm going to throw it a lot, right, because he's never been real consistent or patient with the run game. I'm going to do that. But at the end of the day, these are the plays we run. Now, where he's great is he, the, the optics of illusion before mm-hmm. the snap, like you're yeah. saying, and the changing of looks. So he's not necessarily into, like, I'm going to crack the code of this defense. He just goes – I'm going to give this defense some different looks, and right. we're going to do what we do. And I think that'll be just enough of an advantage we need to get guys like Tyree Kill and Sammy Watkins and Travis Kelsey open. So it's not necessarily the attacking in the scheme, more of the, this is what we're going to do. We're going to throw a whole lot at you. I mean, at one play, all four guys are going to go vertical. The next time, we're going 
have two guys crossing underneath and a guy running over post. And this, and then we're going to run that play later in the game, but mm -hmm. we're going to fake the speed sweep to Tyree Kill and then maybe fake the run. And then it's going to be a guy running the post and the two crossovers. So he makes the defense go, oh, well, okay, they ran that play. This can't be the same play. And then all of a sudden it is the same play and they're off kilter. That would be the little difference I would explain Andy Reid's offense uh, as maybe compared to a Peyton or, or McDaniels. I think you explained it well. And you talk about it in terms of how much it puts on a defense. Like, here's what we're going to do. Yeah. It's going to be a lot. Right. The other side of that, that yeah. puts a lot on his quarterback. It and does. There's no surprise that Alex Smith can handle it yeah. with his experience right. and intelligence. But we talk so much about Patrick Mahomes' explosive throws and raw talent. I, I think it gets overlooked that he has a grasp in year two or had a grasp in year two of Andy Reid's system, which is wonderful to run, but right. also I think super difficult for quarterbacks. Yeah. So this is a guy that must be incredibly intelligent as well as being yes. incredibly gifted. Exactly right. I, this is an issue with me right off the bat. And I hear this too much even from my coach friends in the NFL. Too much. Where they think like the talented guys won't listen to right. the coaching or they're not smart. And I want to go, why? Because, you know, once every three games he makes some crazy throw, you know, but yet – Kirk Cousins is really smart, and then I want to go, well, once every few games, he throws some of the dumbest interceptions I've ever seen, or, or Ryan Fitzpatrick, or anything like that. I hate that notion. You know, when you really look at the great quarterback, team, combos, everything like that, what was there? Yeah, the quarterback was smart. We talked about all the great quarterbacks are smart. But, you know, it was a talented quarterback who had some brains to go with a little creativity a la Dan Fouts and Dan, uh, Air Coriel and all of those things. Uh, but I think too much and too often people think that guys like, yeah, Mahomes and some of these other freaky talented guys, I heard this when they were coming out in the draft. I, you know, I don't know if he's going to do what I tell him to do. <laughs> right. Well, uh, how do you know that? Why? You know, and, and then – I also don't like the fact that, like, hey, with the Tom Brady, he gets pegged as that guy sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go, no, he's not. Tom's talent doesn't get the attention it deserves. Right. Tom's arm is big time. Yeah. Tom made a play in the first game last year against the Houston Texans where it was a horrible decision. It was Gronkowski double covered from the snap. He knew it. But you know what he said? And the coach would have told him, don't throw it there. But you know what he said? He goes, F I'm Tom right. Brady, and that's Gronk, and I don't give a shit. I'm going to throw the ball perfect, right. and he's going to do that. And that's where I, they're the New England Patriots, where I feel like there's some other great offensive coaches who go, oh, I don't know if I want the really talented guy. I just want the guy that's going to do what I say to do all the time. Well, that's great. But when you play that two or three defenses a year who's all over the shit you told the coach to do, hmm. what the f*** is your quarterback going to do then? <laughs> that's what I want to know. Right. And that's a, I have a battle with that with some of my coach friends from time to time. Right. Yeah. I think it's easy to, to say, easy to point that finger when a guy is super talented. And with that talent comes a lot of the confidence. Some people see it as cocky. And they yeah, think, oh, right. He's not going to be coachable. Yeah, right. And maybe he won't be or she wouldn't be going into any professional sport if that person thinks that they're smarter than the coach. And that's within a lot of the guys to have that thought. Yes. Right. And if they sense that, then they're not going to be Then there can be some issues. But no doubt. if the coach can bring it and show him he knows what he's doing. Right. Exactly right. If the coach Then they're exactly coachable. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. Well, I think that's where we can get into Aaron Rodgers a little bit. If people want to go, why he's it's not a good coach. segue into. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we might as well go into it. Let's yeah. go. We're here. That's right. That's great. You ready, Pete, back there? You ready for the number one quarterback in all of the NFL, okay? The number one quarterback in the NFL is still Aaron Rodgers, okay? It is, oh, Aaron Rodgers, you're the greatest. Greatest quarterback I've ever seen. I like Mahomes' tune better. You like it better? Yeah. How dare you, blasphemy? No, that's okay. You're a little catchier. Though. A little catchier. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, that, I don't know how I even came up with the Aaron <laughs> Rodgers thing. Again, me sitting on the couch just being stupid at home. But yes, Aaron Rodgers to me is still the number one quarterback in all of football. Biggest reason. Biggest reason you have him over Mahomes. Biggest reason I have over him and over Mahomes, like I just said, I think is just the experience factor. I think everything is so close. But I don't think, yeah, I look at an Aaron Rodgers and still think he's very much in the prime of his career. I mean, is it starting maybe the downslope of the prime? Bit, sure, but, definitely. But, but that experience allows him to do what better? It, 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 oh, it, amount, it allows him to, one, do things at the line of scrimmage that are phenomenal, but two, decipher the defense just a hair quicker when he does drop back. Right. And, you know, those are the things, again, they're minute negatives with Patrick Mahomes. But, yeah, I would I, I would like to think that I don't like to think I know like 
Aaron Rodgers the start of the New England game early last year, the first game, right? You know, oh, they got people at the line of scrimmage. Oh, Mahomes just thinks they're blitzing because they're going to, you know, they're at the line of scrimmage. They're going to blitz. He drops back to pass. He thinks Kelsey's wide open over the middle. No, Dante Hightower faked the blitz and dropped out. You threw it right in his chest to start the game, right? right. Remember that? Those are things I just go, no, that's, that's not going to happen with Aaron Rodgers. Now, again, did Aaron Rodgers have some ugly moments last year? Sure. You know, their offense and everything? Yes. I mean, hey, we can go to the Cardinals game where they got fi- Mike McCarthy fired. We can go to the Buffalo game where it was tough sledding. But the thing I want to tell people, and I wish I could sit down and watch film with them and these type of things, is go, you know, we could sit there and watch the 30 passes he dropped back in the game. And I would go, what the f*** do you want him to do? Yeah. What, who do, what do you expect any quarterback to do here? That's, the, that's what I would tell you. And a lot of the moments where you saw, oh, the offense is so stale. It wasn't like he was, like, dropping back and, like, people were wide open. And he was just like, oh, man, I forgot how to play quarterback. Hmm. I don't know. Not at all. You know, last year, the biggest reason to me why he couldn't carry the team as can maybe compared to other years where, you know, there was no real legitimate run game or the defense wasn't great. The defense is improving. But the, the last year, the pass protection was really an issue in Green Bay. At least the other years when I complained about lack of creativity and lack of big-time weapons and lack of a run game, the pass protection was so good that he would still go, Shit, I'm Aaron Rodgers. I'm just going to sit back here and somebody will, I'll make, I'm going to wait and make people miss until somebody gets open, and then I'm going to throw a 40-yard laser somewhere. It didn't work last year. Last year, it was a little bit like Deshaun Watson at times. I mean, with Byron Bell, you know, starting uh, on the offensive line, they had some injuries in the interior part. There were some games where it was just like, no, between nobody being open and how quickly people were getting to be around him, he couldn't do anything. Do you think this year, I mean, are, are you encouraged that there, there yes. will be people open and that he'll be protected? I, I am so excited for this year. Yes, and I am expecting one of the best years of Aaron Rodgers' career because I think it's going to be the first time really in a long time that he has the correct support system. I think, you know, all of his line, they made proper adjustments. I think you got a, a, a coach, two coaches, in, in LaFleur and the offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett, who know how to coach the run game. So, this is going to be the first time ever we're going to go, oh, Aaron Rodgers doesn't have to drop back and like just make magic happen and has to throw three touchdowns and they have to score 30 points to win a game. He might actually be able to go like, oh, okay, well, my defense might be able to win this game. We, I, I, maybe I approach it differently. Maybe I, I manage the game differently. We might win 23-20 today or 20-17. to But, yeah, I expect between that, the – the next level of creativity that I think LaFleur and Hackett bring. I think bring. that's – it feels like change was yes, really, was really needed. needed. Yeah. You know, and that – Refreshing that, to him, I'm sure. Refreshing. Yeah. And, you know, I can't tell you enough about how elementary the offense was and is. And, again, you know, I did this – I've been doing this to people on the radio a lot the last few weeks. And I go, okay, they got Devontae Adams. Who's the other receiver on their team? Who's the other receiver? And the hosts are always going, ah, oh, ah, um, oh, oh, Geronimo Allison. They're, you know, it takes, or they don't come up with anybody. And I go, exactly. How there about you tight go. end? Who's the starting running back? <laughs> right. right. Aaron Jones is. But, right. what, what, uh, uh. Yeah. but we're going to talk about other quarterbacks that are going to say, oh, they don't have great talent around them. I want to go, you know, Jimmy Graham. I mean, it's been, it was underwhelming in Seattle when he left New Orleans. It's underwhelming in Green Bay. I mean, I don't know it's a name, but it's certainly not, like, in the conversation for one of the best tight ends in football anymore. And this year it looks better because? I just think because of the, the run game, I think there's going to be more dynamic uh, schemes on a week-to-week basis. He's going to be running play-action passes that he's never run before. He's going to be taught little things. He's going to be taught little things about coverages and how these plays work and just little intricacies of what to read to make the play work that he's never been taught before. I mean, that's the difference between good coaching and bad coaching. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of teams have the same plays. You know, I went to with John Gruden and went, oh, we got this play, okay. And then I went with Josh McDaniels and it was the same play, but Josh had a few little things to read or do within the – and I went, oh, my gosh. This play is so much better now that he taught huge it that difference. way. Yeah. Right, it was a huge difference. Even though it was the same play, he gave us a different thing to think about or look or read. And you all got an sudden, example of one or two of those things that, that made a play that you already knew yeah. made it work a little well, better? Well, yeah, like, okay, there's like um, this uh, – New England would call it like a smash concept. Like basically the outside guy runs a five-yard five yard and under route, right? Yep. Straight under, right? And then 
with, right. let's say, um, the, the slot guy is going to run like a 15-yard out over the top yep. of it. And generally, it's a play you want to run versus cover two. Mm -hmm. You're going to high-low that corner out there, right? Yep. Well, and with Gruden, we only would have ran the play with cover two. And he would have only said, he would have only said, I really only want you to play that side of the field if it's cover two. And if it's not, I have a single safety concept on the other side. Right. New England is different, first of all, where they don't do, oh, we're going to read one side or the other. Their plays are full field reads. They start in one spot and they go across the whole field, which not a lot of teams in football do. It's very rare. I mean, when new people go up there and work, work there, they're always like, did you know that New England did this? And I'm like, yes, I've known for What's a long time. What's the biggest time. cut against the grain that, that well, people are like? That, well, th they're, that's they're different amazed, what? Well, they're amazed that there's not a lot of double calls in the huddle, right? They have all these plays that are all purpose. Like, just get up to the line of scrimmage. You just run it no matter what Just run it no is. matter what, right. And they got all the answers for it. And that's what's special. But, like, with, the, with the, the concept I was talking about with Gruden, how we would only run it versus cover two, Josh was like, McDaniels was like, well, why? Why would you only run it? Here's, here's cover three and man-to-man, -man and that guy's open. So we're, we're passing away completions or opportunities to throw it to the first read. Why? Just because of where the safety's lined up? And then I was like, yeah, you're f***ing right, Josh. I was like, I'm, I'm so, picturing that against cover three and with a soft corner. So, so cover and three. And yard So you just would you, run right into you it. You would. But if you read the corner and corners not are not, a, you know, they're, they, if the corners still sometimes in cover three mm -hmm. would go down and crash on the under route. Really? Because he would take the bait. He'd see the guy running at him yeah. and he'd see him go in and he might pause for a second or take a step in to follow him. Yeah. And then you go, oh, you're f Here yeah. goes the ball right over your head to that yeah. guy. Or if he did go way far out, right, mm -hmm. and now you have the under against cover three, well, he's out of there, and usually the underneath guy that's supposed to go like the curl flat area, he would run right by the under to where the under would cross his face, and you'd go, holy shit, I just throw it to him right here, and he's going to catch the ball and run upfield for another 10 yards. Good point. Right, you know what I mean? Yeah. So those are things like I never thought of. I was with John Gruden, who's an offensive genius forever, yeah, right. and then I went to another offensive coordinator, and he taught me a new point about the play, and I went, Damn, this play is so much bit better and easier now. Yeah. And th that's the instances I'm talking about that I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be provided with more this year than ever before. And that's what I'm excited about. I think it's an interesting thing that you point out about Josh McDaniels versus John Gruden. They both had a whole lot of success in the league, passed Definitely. the ball. But how Josh is like, you know what, I don't care what they line up in. Right. We're going to run it anyway. And I found a lot of coaches to be that way in the NFL. That Don't make the assumption, and we did this in college, don't make the assumption because – a defense is lined up the way it is on the chalkboard, and right. it looks like it should be covered. Right. Maybe the guy doesn't do what he's supposed to do. Exactly. And, and then, so, yeah, you don't want to pass up the opportunity to go, damn, we could have had a 40-yard completion. I thought everybody thought that way coming right. out of college. Right. But now, get, getting to know some of these guys, it's just it's fun to see the coaches are like, you know what, screw it. I know he's supposed to be there and stop it. But yeah. My guy's better. Exactly. Let's run it anyway. Exactly right. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that is where New England is refreshing that way. Now, can Tom, if something crazy happens, will he audible out it, do something like that? Certainly. I mean, he's Tom Brady. Right. But, you know, yeah, it, that's where it's just coaching comes into play, and that's even for a guy like Aaron Rodgers, who we know is extremely smart and got great experience. I always used to say, one of the things I would say about Aaron Rodgers is he doesn't even know what he doesn't know. Right. He doesn't. You know, he's watching tape of, you know, Breeze or Brady or some other great offenses and going, what the f***? How is, they, how is that guy open like that? What, right. How is he getting him open like that? And what are they doing? And a lot of it is about game planning, teaching, sequencing of plays, and then attacking rules on the defense, which I just don't think he was afforded the luxury of the last few years, and especially not last year. Um, but I still think the decision-making, I mean – it's top notch. Mm -hmm. You know, people are going to go, oh, he took a lot of sacks last year. Yes, he did. There are a few I wish he would have thrown the ball away. Yes. But like Deshaun Watson, there was a few where the, the pressure got on him so fast, he, he couldn't even throw it away. Or he was going to throw it away and it was going to be intentional grounding. Yeah. So the smarts are there. The, the throwing is still out of this world. I mean, accuracy, everything about it. The movement Okay, it's maybe not as good as it was two, three years ago. It's good enough, It's though. good enough, though. Exactly yeah. right. It's still, it's still pretty top level in the NFL. So all of those things just make me sit here and go, yeah, I still think Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in football. He, he made me think twice this year with Patrick yeah. Mahomes you know, breathing down his neck. But, yes, I do think Aaron Rodgers is number one. So if the Packers have the best quarterback in football and their offense from system 
to personnel. Oh, going to be better. Yeah. Are you talking about the best team in the NFC North? Ooh, they're they're. I still think that Bears roster is better. Mm-hmm. I do. Um, but I do think the Green Bay Packers and you know their defense. He's going to have a defense this year for the first time since you know 2011 and 12. Where, yeah, this is. I, I look at their defense with Mike Patton and everything, and I go. No, this should be a top 10 defense with with the addition of Preston Smith and the addition of Zadarius Smith and drafting a Rashawn Gary, Mm -hmm. getting Adrian Amos in free agency from the Bears, getting a Darnell Savage also in the first round from Rashawn Gary, Jair Alexander, who is in the conversation for one of the best corners in football already his second year. There's a lot of things to like about the Green Bay team where I go, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if they made a big turnaround and were a very relevant team in the NFC once again. So we are doing this on Thursday afternoon yeah. here on the East Coast. Thursday morning, you and Mike Florio talked about the list and got to 2-1. and one. Yeah. So a lot of people were paying attention to that. So we do have a little bit of reaction already from sure. your – having Patrick Mahomes at two, Aaron Rodgers at one. And I'd like to show one, guys, in the back here. Richie C, 555. I like the point he makes here. At least I want to hear what Chris has to say to it. Yeah. He said, Chris, you're not using your own logic. Rodgers, who you had number one, yeah. is not in the prime of his career anymore. He's showing signs of wear and tear and age. That's why you have Breeze and Brady 9 and 10. Yeah, I, but I don't think it's the wear and tear to that degree, you know. And, and the wear and tear, I don't know if I can necessarily say I, I do see wear and tear. No, I see him getting worn out and tore around by deposing defenses because there's not enough help there at times. So, no, I, I you know, again, um, I understand that. Is he at his perfect peak of, of, like, play that he was, like I would say, two or three years ago? No, but the play is still at – all-time high level. And when there was something else I wanted to comment. Which question was that? Let me just make that sure I got all of that. Uh, in the middle? That was Richie C555. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, no. It's not to the point of Brady and Breeze. I mean, come on, guys. Come on. It's not, not even close. Don't even start that. I mean, come on. He was in a good mood. I know. I mean, Breeze, they brought in another guy to throw post routes at the end of the year. I mean, that's that's negative Ghost Rider. So, is he as – just God-given, sickly talented as he was in 2013 or 14? No, but it's still out of this world. Okay. What else? You, you got right? another, any other reactions? Well, th- there's one that might be biased. Chiefs yeah. Forever 15. I don't know what team he likes. Yeah. She, and I don't know what player yeah. at number 15. You have Rodgers at one, and he hasn't had a decent <laughs> season in three years. Mahomes should be number one. I, I get the feeling it's 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 inevitable. I, I understand that. And in the next couple it. years, it's a healthy conversation, right? Yeah. I mean, I understand it. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying I know this one was so close that if right. people want to say Mahomes is one, I'm not going to go like, oh, you're stupid. How could mm-hmm. you say that? No, I go, I, I get it. It's it's special. Did you spend any time in the last month or couple days or week with? Mahomes at one, I, Rogers at two, when and then, I, then he raced it. No, I didn't. I did not, but I did like severely consider it. I when I first wrote it down, I started with Rogers at one and Mahomes at two, and I let it settle. And like the next day, I that's right back where I went to. I was like, okay, wait, am I really gonna? Is Aaron Rodgers really number one? Am I really gonna say that? And you know, again, to back to what he said, two dud years. Mm-hmm. Hey. It's a team. If he had Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey and one of the best offensive lines in football, and Sammy Watkins, who's being paid like he's Odell Beckham Jr., and Kareem Hunt, and all the other things around him, I don't think it would be all that different. Right. I think you'd see a lot of the same statistics from from him. So let's not forget that, and let's not say what was it, 4,500 yards, 25 touchdowns, and two interceptions. Let's let's relax on. He had two dud years, like, okay, <laughs> with Aaron Rodgers. I don't, I don't think that's the case. Aaron Rodgers and what he's had to do for that team is going to lend itself to injuries. He has to play the game closer to the edge than some of the other quarterbacks who are on really good football teams around them. Rodgers has realized the last few years that if he doesn't make the plays, if he doesn't do it, they're not going to win the game. Yeah. And we've heard their players back that up. Right. I mean, they've said that flat out. So, yes, you know, as compared to a quarterback who's on a good team, who's got, okay, he's in the pocket and people are grabbing at him and, you know, they might just go down and go, well, we're good. I'll get another crack at it here in a second and we'll make it happen. Rodgers is every play is like that. And he's always trying to make something happen because he goes, if I don't make it happen, I mean, what were they going to rely on, their run game? 
or the great offensive genius of you know what Mike McCarthy's offense did. And again, I like Mike McCarthy as a head coach. Just the offensive play call, I would like to clar for, clarify that. That was my issue with Mike McCarthy. Deserves to be a head coach once again. Just want him to hire another offensive coordinator. That's not his strong point. Um, but that's, what all, that's all I'll say about that. All right, so we had Mahomes at two. Yeah. We had Rodgers at one. Right. right. That's it. That's, That's a it. list. Damn. I'd like to go back and take, take a, a big picture look. Cool. Let's cut it into two if we could. Let's go 40 down to 20 or 21. Yep. I'd, and, I'd and like take to take a look at I got to look at the, the, the list okay. myself. All right, so Some there interesting they are. things here. Right? Started yep. with Tyrod Taylor. You know, that was my worst. I think that was my most egregious error. Where would you put him now? He should have been, he should have been 36. And everybody else should have been knocked down one. And you had RG3 at 36. Yes. Okay. I, 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 that, was, that was one as I talked it out more and more. I said, oh, that was, that was, to me, is the, the one that pisses me off more than any. Which one do you think, and that would have yeah. Tyrod Taylor moving up for, which one on this list, 21 through 40, do you think is going to have the biggest jump this year? Ooh, baby. Okay. The biggest jump. And, I mean, we went in a positive way. Yep. This is where I go to – Number 22 and number 23. Which is Darnold 22, right. Josh Allen 23. I do. Th these guys, again, I'm ranking them for what they are right now. They're more talented than a lot of the guys that are in front of them. But I'm not going to say they're better players yet with the limited scope of what we've seen in a rookie year that was up and down for both of them. But I think their baseline potential, their ceiling, is much higher than some of the guys in front of them. So I could see Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, all of them creeping into top 10, uh, certainly top Ooh. 15. I think they're that type of talent, and, and you know, we'll see if they can can do that. Kyler Murray at 24. Your, I, your I, gut feeling on what he's going to be next I, year. I, I think it's going to be a lot of, like, just unbelievable – Awesome and then unbelievable. Oh gosh, that was a disaster a little bit too. Yeah. Uh, because I think he's probably going to try to do too much at times and he's so physically gifted, he's going to think I can pull it off. It's what you see with a lot of these quarterbacks at sometimes. But I think it's going to be can't miss TV. I think he's going to be in your top 20 next You think year. he's going to be in my top? I, th I mean, yeah. he certainly has the type of potential to do that. I mean, it, it's. It's a special type of talent again. It's a talent you don't see come around very often, even though it's small and rare. Damn, did you see him beat Danny and Isabella the other day? No. Or Andy Isabella? Andy Isabella went to the combine and ran a 4-3-1 out of UMass. They got on the line and they showed he it on Instagram. Him. He beat him. I mean, that's what he is. Hey, you know, I want to get, tell all the people who are going, how could you make him one of the five best scramblers in football and he hasn't even played a game? That's why. Yeah. Because nobody can beat him in a race, and he's going to be electric when he tucks the ball away. You had two other rookies in there, Drew Locke and, and Dwayne Haskins. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. See what the rookie seasons hold for those yep. guys as well. We right, will. Let's move up the list. Top 20. Take another peek at who Chris had in the top 20. We saw one today, Aaron Rodgers, two, Patrick Mahomes. There's your list. Who is one guy on this list that you know people gave you a hard time about and you really had a hard time putting him that low on a list that you're like, you know what, I would be happy to be wrong about this quarterback and see him move up quite a few in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, Baker Mayfield, again, along those same lines. Like what do you have him Well, I have him at 17. Okay. And I think a lot of people were like, man, that's low for Baker Mayfield. And yeah. I get it. Yeah, Baker Mayfield, I mean, again, like, like Darnold and Allen, the talent is better than – Foles, Cousins, some of the other guys, Rivers right now in this point of his career. I mean, it's better than all of those. But Baker Mayfield still had some rookie moments last year where, you know, whether it was interceptions in the Ravens game or the Houston Texans game or here and there where he was a rookie, and that's okay. And we just got to see it a little bit more. But, you know, that's one where I go, I, I, I hope I'm wrong. And Matthew Stafford. I mean, I, I got sick of the hate on Matthew Stafford last year. I think the talent is still top ten talent. Um, sure. yeah. Can he adjust to this new style of play in Detroit uh, and, and really adjust to being, you know, micromanaged a little bit by Matt Patricia and wanting to run the ball and play through the defense? That's going to be the big test for him. But I would gladly like to be wrong about him as well. I mean, all of them. I just hope everybody knows I really don't dislike any of these guys. Right. I'm a fan. I love football. Do I like some quarterbacks more than others? Of yes. But there's really – Nobody I dislike in football at the quarterback position. There's nobody. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I respect them all. They're all tough. They all got talent. I know how hard it is to be successful at the position and uh, really admire all of them. And it's just it's never an easy or popular thing making these lists. As I see some of the feedback that you get and yeah. kind of watch you go through, I don't want to say the angst because it's not like that painful of a thing, but I know you put a lot of thought into it. And I know something 
in there makes you feel bad for having a quarterback you like as a player. Yeah. So personally, not as high up on the list as he would like to be or his fans would like him to right. be. And I recognize that throughout. I think there's an admiration because it wasn't that long ago that you did it yourself yep, right. for what these guys do. So whether you had him ranked 40th or 1, I thought that shined through the entire time is that you have a hell of a lot of respect for all these guys. And Thank you'd you. love to see all of them do well. I would. No matter what some of the Come fans on. out there may I think. mean, I've been through it all. I lived it. I heard, I heard it somehow, some way. Pretty much in every single game. Yeah, you know, yeah. hey, I just, it, I grew up around it. I watched my dad. I watched him struggle through years. I mean, even when he'd be having a great year, the, you know, could it be the perception could be always oh, struggling. And yeah. you're going, no, he's playing great. I mean, his coaches are telling him he's playing awesome. But, right. you know, they've had a few tough losses and their defense gave him some big plays. And the quarterback all of a sudden is the issue. So I know it's tough. And it's never easy doing these rankings. And, you know, the biggest thing is, and I'll go back to this, I've said this a lot over the last few weeks. We're, I truly believe we're in the golden era of quarterbacks. So right many, now. so many good So ones. many good talented I was just looking at that when you had your top 20 yeah. up there, the guys 10 through 20. I mean, it's insane. Man, those guys are, some of them are really strong. Oof, that was some of the hardest rankings yeah. right there, 10 through 20, because it's just like, okay, all it's these guys are awesome Wait, well players. taken, enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, exactly right, right. And Tom Brady has oh, some motivation. Baby. Finally. 61 miles per hour, he, he threw a ball that fast? Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that's what they're putting out there. And he's going to fall off a cliff with a football emoji and the, um, hmm, I don't know about that part of it. Somebody I, said he was going to fall off a cliff. Well, I, I believe it's Max Kellerman. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I'm pretty sure I remember. I was watching the show, I feel like, on like a Friday morning when Max Kellerman said it. So I feel like that's where it is, but I'm not totally 100% sure. But again, Tom Brady. How good is 61? I'm, it's really good. And, and, and Tom Brady, you've heard me say it, his arm is going to last the test of time. Yeah. He can throw it. When Tom Brady's 55, he's, we, we could still go out and have a catch, and we're going to go, damn, right. Tom can throw it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way he's built as a human being, he's got big hands, he's got long arms, and then he does it the right way. He's got the right techniques to drive the ball and throw a ball 61 miles per hour, which is freaking impressive. And I've seen it in person. He can throw lasers. So one thing, again, because people think I hate on Tom Brady <laughs> – the, this, the one thing that drives me crazy is I end up defending him a lot to friends and especially people in the New York area who want to be haters on him, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Tom Brady's talent does not get the credit it deserves. When Tom Brady was in his prime and even right now, the arm is special. It is a special arm. You know, is it Elway or Rodgers or Marino? Okay, maybe not that. But it's like the next level. He throws the hell out of the ball. And if I don't think it, people get credit level, for it no. because it's easy. Right. You know, it just comes off to him so easy. He doesn't have like the theatrics of like, you know, maybe a Brett Favre when we used to see him throw it hard. It was like, huh, and he was like, you know, that, you know, Brady, you know, a lot like I've said with like Joe Flacco, they can throw the 100 mile per hour fastball and it looks like they're throwing the change up. Right. And you're just like, man. And then you see it in person. And like you said, you start to see it and you go, holy shit, that ball's moving. And he's a guy who's, who's found a way to make – not major changes to his motion, but yes. he has tweaked it. Tweaked it. He's gotten more body into it. Yes. He's made his release more compact. He does this whole thing now. You ever see him warm up where he crosses his arms like this? Because like the way Rogers he's trying to do that. Yeah. Right. He's yeah. trying to go across the body because he got into that real vertical motion at one mm -hmm. point of his career, which, yeah, I think hurt, you know, the aspect of throwing the ball down the field and doing things like that. And, man, now – I've said this a million times over the last two or three years. He's making more big throws and plays now than he did in 2012 yeah. and 13. And, I, and that was a time where I was like, oh, I don't know how much longer this Tom Brady thing's going to last. And I don't think New England did too because that's why they drafted Jimmy Garoppolo in the second round those years. They were right. going, damn, things are not looking <laughs> as good as we'd like them. And he made some tweaks, and he's been phenomenal ever since. Exhale. Ah, Exhale. Yeah. There's your list. School's out for summer. What are you up to now these next, uh, for the month of July? What do you got? I got a staycation. Yeah. Staycation. I'm going to Lake Tahoe okay. for the little NBC, you know, celebrity you're, golf you're tournament. You're one of the NBC celebrities. I am. I'm not yeah. one of the, no, I'm the one of the NBC do boys. They <laughs> go talk to the celebrities. <laughs> We've hired you to go talk to them. So I, I, that's going to be cool. There's certainly going to be a lot of athletes that I admire there doing that. But everything else. You're going to be on TV, on podcast? No, what do you, what do you no. Got? I mean, we got the podcast. We're going to release some things as we go here. We're going to see about one a week, okay? And I don't think we know what day we're going to do it yet. Probably a Wednesday, maybe. Something like that along those lines. Um, we've got a few things in the can. Hopefully we'll record, release other interviews. And yeah, I'm going to try to get in here and maybe do one, one here and there too. But I'm looking forward to just chilling. Right? I needed, I need, it was a big year. Yes, I made a job was. change. Yeah. Uh, as you know, I've been talking a lot 
And on, on TV? Yes. On and, uh, podcasting a lot? I'm yes. just going to check out. Lots of te tequila, lots of Mary Jane tequila. is coming my way the next the month. The month of July. Yes, it yeah. is. Yes. Mary that, Jane. Both those things should make the Tour de France look really good from your couch. Without a doubt. Right? You're right. It's on early, though. I'll be it's like, on super early. Oh, okay. You have to be up at like 6 in the morning to watch the Oh, Well, maybe show. it'll be one of those when I stay up all night and I'll just keep going. And I'm going to text like, you. You'll text me and get yeah. my ass up. Yeah. <laughs> Pete, Pete's talking to me. Pete's trying to tell me something as I'm chatting away with you. We have Chris and Mike singing. Oh, gosh. Damn it. Yeah. This is what happens. Mike singing, too? Yes. You like classic rock and roll music. Down, 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 down. Then you're going to love PFT Sings the Classics with incredible hits like Oh, ring, ding, dong, ring a ding, 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 dong. Stir it up, Will, darling, stir it up. Oh, mama, I'm in fear for my life of the long arm of the law. Thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo. Seal it, say, Brandy. You're a fine girl. What a good wife you would be. Such a fine. I put my hand up on your hip. When I dip, you dip, we dip. Rogers and the floor. School's <laughs> out forever. Who sings that song? Alice Cooper, really? Is that Alice Cooper? Order yours today. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. Well done. I'm well in. Well done. I want that one. Gosh, the shit you'll do to entertain yourself during a commercial break, okay? I mean, yeah. Yeah. The Peter King appearance was that was, was phenomenal because we yeah. could, we could add some extra other like uh, sound effects with Peter King from his time. <laughs> him between him chewing, slurping like drinks while he's in commercial breaks and things like that. I've seen some pretty good moments with him too. That's next year. Yeah, that's next Bust year. That out. All right, everybody. Paul Burmeister, Chris Sims, we're out. Hey, you the man. That was fun. I mean, I feel like it's like the end of the calendar year. We're going to kick it off, you know, again for the season when it's the end of July. But we do got podcasts coming out, and we got one coming out Monday, okay? It'll ask me anything, all right, that I, again, I'm going to do. So expect that next week for everybody out there. And we're going to continue to put content out there with Chris Sims unbuttoned and everything else. But hope everybody enjoyed the list. Uh, everybody out there, be safe. I'll talk to you. It's summertime. Have fun. And uh, that's really it. Enjoy your July. Yeah, I am. All I right? can't wait. I'm out of here. Happy See ya. Morning. I'm out. <laughs> that was the initial <laughs> sign off. See ya. Yo, yo, what's up? Come on, man. Subscribe on YouTube to Chris Sims Unbuttoned Podcast. I need you. Please hit the subscribe button, please.